And there you see Rocco Santamore. Let's just say he doesn't lack for personality. Now he's a character. Oh yeah, he if is a character. Santamore has the flag from Uruguay. That's where his parents are from. Also has some Italian roots. Shane Mosley right there behind him trains him. There you see Shane's son next to him, Shane Jr. Santamore at the weighing actually ate some ice cream before he stepped on the scale. That's how confident he was he was going to make the weight. And then at the final press conference, he actually was drinking some herbal tea from, as he said, his country from Uruguay. But it wasn't just in a regular cup. It was creative. Yes, it was. It, it, was, it was very creative. Hey, he likes attention. There's nothing wrong with that. Because he's not shy. He's not camera shy. He comes to put on a show. Got a lot of energy, yes, and uh, as you as you notice, you, uh, as you mentioned, he's trained and managed by, by Sugar Shane Mosley. But Mosley's still fighting, and Mosley's trained by Roberto Duran. So he got to train with Roberto Duran. Santo Moro had to go down to Panama for some sparring because his trainer Mosley's down there getting ready for a fight. And there you see him from Mexicali, Mexico, Diego De La Hoya, the 21-year-old cousin of Oscar De La Hoya. He is managed by Oscar's cousin, a brother, Joel De La Hoya. So it's an entire De La Hoya plan. Promoter, manager, and the fighter. Cachanilla power for the fighter from Mexicali, trained by Joel Diaz in the Coachella Valley. He's 14 and 0 with 8 KOs, fighting in Las Vegas. A fighter that does not have seen a lot of coming through the Golden Boy fight series. We've seen him grow up, we've seen his professional debut, now we see him in Las Vegas, Doug. Yeah, and tell the tape real quickly, at age 21, he is seven years younger than Santa Moro. Santa Moro has one inch in height, and their reach, that's well, pretty much equal. Slight advantage to Santa Moro. Gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing this skeleton in the Super Bantamweight division. Presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by Cerveza Tecate Born Bowl. In association with O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Casa Mexico Tequila, it's in the taste. Doom, fight like hell on May 13th. And Hands of Stone, the true story of Roberto Duran starring Edgar Ramirez, Robert De Niro, and Usher Raymond in theaters this August. And here we go, fine fans, introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing tiger trunks, trimmed in black, he weighed in officially 121 pounds. His professional record in 13 bouts stands perfect with 13 victories, no defeats, one win by KO from Duarte, California. Here is the undefeated Rocco Santomar! And next is opponent across the ring. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple with silver. He weighed in 122 pounds even. He too stands perfect in the ring with 14 victories. No defeats, eight big wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando el hijo de Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico, Diego de la Oya. And your referee in charge of the action is Jay Nady. Eight rounds. Obey my commands. Ocho Asaltes. Good, Good luck. luck. Touch gloves. Let's go to work. <laughs> I got you. My time, baby. Referee Jay Nady with the instructions. Ready to go. Super Bantam weight division between Diego DeLoya and Rocco Santo Mauro. Ring bell starts the Duran. Doug Fisher on the fights tonight on the night of Canelo and Khan. You can still buy that pay-per-view. First round of action underway. Eight round schedule. Deloya wearing a purple. You see Mexicali on the side of his trunk. That's where the phone now lives in Calexico. Has an hour and a half every day to go train with the Diaz brothers, Joel Diaz in the Coachella Valley. Santa Moro, Tiger Stripes. Santa Moro. Duarte, California, uh, raised in Asperia, California. 
now living in Las Vegas, but he trains in Los Angeles whenever he has a fight. So that's where Shane Mosley is at. He, he had more in his energy than he knew what to do with before this opening bell. Just jumping around in the corner, pacing like a cage tiger. And now he's in there with a very well-schooled prospect, a guy who was a standout amateur in Mexico. A guy that we saw improve with each outing last year. I believe he fought four times, or was it five times in 2015? 2015, De La Hoya fought five times. Yeah, and he got better each time. At the start of the year, he looked like a guy with, with a, a famous name who had some potential. By the end of the year, looked like a legitimate prospect. De La Hoya started boxing at the age of eight. The last time he was in the ring, February 19th of this year, he stopped Arturo Valdio in the fourth round. But for Santa Mora, he fought also in February, a decision that some were questioning whether he should have won. He beat Jose Estrella, a rugged Tijuana fighter, in six rounds. I thought Estrella deserved that decision. Many did. Ring Santa Mora said that um, he had the flu that we. He'd been out of the ranch for more than a year. He wasn't going to back out of the fight. It was a good uh, experience for him, good exposure Box. for him. And he feels that had he looked any better than he did that night, he probably wouldn't have got this opportunity against Diego De La Hoya. He's very confident in himself as Santo Moro, telling everybody, no, no, my record's 14-0, because I'm going to win. I'm going to be 14-0. Don't get a in yourself. Better start landing some punches. That's tomorrow. 13 and 0, only one KO in his career. The boy at the age of 21. Keep your head up. Spencer's amateur box background. Ooh, crack with a good left by Deloya. Another good left from Deloya. We have come down to the nose of Santa Moro here in the first. Another good left hook from Diego De La Hoya. Final second of the first round on the night of Canelo and Khan in Las Vegas. Síguelo, síguelo finteando. Él ya está lastimado, mijo. Lo lastimaste dos veces. The reason why is because every time you throw a punch, he counters with his left hook. Or any left hook, right? Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right Santa so tomorrow missing with a, a kind of a sloppy left and eating a left hook to the body from Diego De La Hoya. And here's a right cross over a missed left hook from Santa Moro. Good counter punching from Diego De La Hoya. Here you see Rocco Santamoro in the stripes. Santamoro is a fighter who I was low. in 2015 didn't fight at all. But yet, this is still able to go out there and hustle and sell himself. Got some sponsorships, got t-shirts made up, got RC barbershop on the back of his shirt. He, he, you know, a dude that knows how to sell himself, but right now, he needs to start throwing some punches because Diego Deloy has been landing heavy shots here in the first round. It's scheduled for eight. And he seems to be one of these people who just has an abundance of energy. And I can, I can see a lot of nervous energy in him right now. He needs to focus that energy in a way that he can, he can at least try to out-hustle Diego De La Hoya. Because I don't think he's on the same level of De La Hoya in terms of his, his boxing skill and his boxing experience. Diego De La Hoya said since he was a kid, everybody would tell him at a tournament, you only won this fight because your name is De La Hoya. Speaking with his dad, then he would come home from bigger tournaments where he clearly won, and everybody telling him he would cry at home. He's a little kid. He's like, but I'm not him. I, I, I'm the one who fought. I did this so his entire life. So he's had to prove people that he's more than just a Deloya name, and he's doing this as a professional. He's now 14 and 0. He said, obviously, the fact that every single one of his fights has been televised. Break. Obviously, the fact that he's fought in Vegas a couple of times is because of the name. But at the end of the day, you still have to do the work. 
And Doug is now 14 and 0. As you mentioned, okay, Doug in 2015 box. fought five times. Opposition got better for him, and he improved. I think you had him down as your most That's improved it. fighter. Absolutely, the most improved prospect that I saw all last year. And these two do have a common opponent. You mentioned Jose Estrella, who somehow beat Rafael Santamaro. But Diego Deloya knocked him out in the fourth round. Almost knocked him out of the ring. I think he might have saved the poor guy. He landed, he literally landed right in front of us. I think his head was up, almost on our lap. That was in 2015 July. Nice the chicken move tactics from Diego. Diego is very uh, versatile for a uh, fighter with just 14 fights and, and, and only being okay, 21. Okay, okay. And tomorrow has that chiseled body. He's a vegan. He watches everything he eats. No, 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 no. You told me, Doug, it's not a bodybuilding competition. No, yeah, just because um, you have a lot of lean muscle. Oh, oh. big right from that way. Dropped Santo Moro here in the second round. Four. He popped up Five. right away, but that was a big Six. right for Santo Moro the first Eight. time okay? in his yeah. career. Are you sure? He's hit yeah. the canvas. Right, so and that box. tells you all you need to know about boxing physiques. You look at Diego De La Hoya. It doesn't look like a very powerful guy, but he is the puncher stop, in this stop, contest. Santo Moro covering up in the box. final seconds of the second. Okay. What's going on, Rocco, is every time he goes like this, he catches you with the shot because you're, st you're still up in front of him, right? He dips down, you got to dip down with him. Every time you go, every time you see him, we go like this, you do that with him, okay? You go down with him. Because if you don't, he's going to come up with left foot or another shot. That's how he's catching you with the shot, right? Because you're going boom, 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 he digs down, boom, he hits you. When he dips down, you dip down with him. Every time you jab, jab, you say dip, dip, and then you come with him. But keep your hands high. Every time you fucking dip, you dip, and you and you won't get hit with nothing. Okay, he's hitting you with the okie dough. So let me, and then he's doing this right here. He's doing that little bolo shot, right? Let's get a look at this knockdown. Slipped a jab, came right through with that straight that straight right. Diego De Loya drops that tomorrow in the second round. See how Santamoro reacts to touching the canvas for the first time in his career. Every time Diego De La Hoya has landed a significant punch to the head or body, it, it, it comes after slipping no, 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 no. a punch Stop. from Santamoro. And that replay of the Wait, knockdown box. punch from, from the previous round was a, a perfect example of that. De La Hoya trained by Joel Diaz in Coachella Valley. A lot of excellent sparring that he gets in that gym. Well, there's the Magdalena brothers, right? Exactly. That's a great spot. Good body work from Diego. And in between rounds, they played that Cachalilla song. The fighter from the song. Oh, he in that area. He loves it. Bobbing his head. All right. The load of his punches here in 2016, isn't he, guys? Very confident. He took the work in last year. He grew from that activity and that experience. He's showing us a lot of different looks against Santa Monica. Showing us the stick and jab. He's showing us the punch punching. Showing the elusiveness. Stop! Showing us some inside game as well. No. That's a warning. Box. Some way to get inside, keep him inside. Watch your point. Maybe work the body of De La Hoya. He doesn't have the power to really dent anybody's chin. He's going to have to really out hustle this uh, more experienced, better talented, better skilled opponent. Diego De Loya turned pro. I mentioned that in September 2013. He was the first fight of the night. Turned pro to Julio Diaz. That night. 
mental hurdle of some fighters. You never know who's going to be the one when you make your debut, the first fight in Las Vegas, and you're fighting at 230, trying to work yourself towards being a main event fighter. He's itching his way closer. It didn't take, and hasn't taken long for, for Diego, and it's not because of his last name. It's really because of his activity and his willingness to face better and better opposition. Eloy in the purple. You sent tomorrow. Ten seconds ago in the third round. It's good for eight. Nice. Uppercut landed by Eloy. Break! Yeah, Santa Moro walked right into Fuck. that. Walking into a lot right now. Like that. New York, New York, and Monte Carlo. Let's look at the replay from earlier action. Santa Moro lunges in with a straight right. Also waltzes right into that right uppercut from Diego De La Hoya. De Diego was just waiting for that. Fourth round is scheduled for eight. Santa Moro eating some punches in the third, went down in the second. Santa Moro is making the mistake of letting his punches go from the outside. He lets his punches go too soon, and then he sort of lunges forward with them. He's getting he's in contact very hard all night from De La Hoya. I think with his lack of power, but with his conditioning, it would behoove him to be more of an inside fighter, kind of a grind. Just get in there and hustle. Work his body with both hands. Grapple with him. Ball, make it an ugly fight. Because he just can't stop, contend stop, with stop. him on the outside. What? What? Box. Diego the lawyer, the purple shorts. Undefeated at 14 and 0. Santamora puts his head down. Referee Jane 80. That was because he pushed your head down. Separate these two. We're warning both of them off pushing each other's heads down. Right on the left, the lawyer. Going upstairs. Watch your heads. Watch. Santa Moro started boxing at a young age. Body shot from the Different martial arts. Yeah, Shane knows it in his corner as his trainer. The oil being worn. You okay? If only he had Shane Mosley's power and Shane yeah. Mosley's chin. He'd be Shane Mosley. <laughs> he would be a prospect. He would be a real prospect. Not just a guy with 13 wins. He does the work. Looks the part. Let him up. Stop. So this is definitely a step up for competition for him. It's a big step up. Body work again from Delaware. And Santa Moore covered up that right side. More body work from Delaware. Dale Moore, you're getting a little bit wild here, but I think maybe he feels that he can make a few mistakes because Santa Mara doesn't have the power to, to hurt him. He's going after that right side is Deloya. Bouncing on his toes. Stiff jab from Deloya. Another good jab followed by body work. Up, right hand from Deloya. Blood from the nose of yep. Santa Mara. Just one uppercut too many. More body work, and you see his cousin Oscar just giving him Shouting it up. Oh, that left from Deloy is nice. That was a lead left, and it was a punch on the fly, too. Good final 45 seconds for Diego Deloy. He's really outclassing Santa Mara here. That wasn't evident in the first three rounds. He's making it very clear here in round four. In the first fight, Curtis Stevens goes up against undefeated Patrick Teixeira from Brazil. Cinco de Mayo weekend. Santa Mauro landed a nice uh, straight right. Stop! He needs more of those, though. That's two. Second That's warning. Five. Diego Box. better be careful with the body shots. Really making an effort going after that right side of Santa Mauro. You can see Santa Mauro really dropping that elbow down a little bit more. Well, that's what Diego wants because he'll punish him with left hooks once that, that uh, right glove drops him out. And he's, I mean, De La Hoya is able to land every punch in the book. He doesn't need to concentrate so many times. That's what the game time was, just the work time. They got big plans for this kid for the next couple of years. He continues to progress, but he's the way he does. 
He's only 21 years old. Yeah, I think he's a fighter, too, from being at that HBO level. We saw uh, just two months ago, Joseph Diaz Jr., 2012 U.S. Olympian, make his HBO debut. When this is tough. Tim Rounder against Jason Perez. The fight made him a contender. I don't think Diego's that far behind here. Body shot from Diego to that right side with the left hook. Canamaro unable to stop it. <laughs> Fifth round, it's scheduled for eight. Brand new T-Mobile Arena. Gloria loading up, trying to tee off on Santa Maura in this round. Well, I felt like he was toying with Santa Maura in round four. Toying with him and punishing him at the same time. Yep. Yeah, the nice 45 seconds where he doing whatever he wanted. Right hand from De La Hoya. There's nothing that Santa Maura can do that De La Hoya can't anticipate. Stop! Counter. Just knows everything Santa Mora is about to do before Santa Mora actually even does it. One step ahead. And that's because Santa Mora is pretty one dimensional. He just comes straight forward. He's on the outside, he's on the outside, and then he lunges straight forward. His face is falling apart. I mean, I, I, I know Shane Mosley's a warrior, but I would consider pulling the plug All right. if I was the trainer of, of Santa Mora. Listen. Listen. What's going on? I don't know. We're all focused, man. A lot of bullshit before the fight. No, you got it. You got it. No, 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 no. Don't, don't worry about nothing else. Okay. I'm not trying to. Anything can happen. Well, there was Stop. a nice turnout for those fighter arrival, arrivals. Back. That was Tuesday. Back. That was Tuesday, yeah. Pretty rare these days for, for a big fight. Good turnout on Tuesday, press conferences on Wednesday, busy week of action. Here in Las Vegas. A palatable buzz, really, since Thursday. You could really feel the fan anticipation. Yeah. You know something's going on, even if you don't know anything about boxing. You know, if you come to the MGM Grand, you're like, okay, there's something's going on here. Something's happening this weekend. The ring in the middle is not going to give you a show in here. Wait, <laughs> you know, I, that's true. But it, there is that buzz around it. There's people talking. Like, you're going? What are you here for? Brand new T-Mobile Arena, the first ever sporting event inside this venue. Construction started two years ago. Later on tonight, Khan and Canelo will mix it up. Right now, Diego De La Hoya. Controlling Rocco Santo Moro. Drop Santa Moro in the second. Doug, as you said, he's been toying with him. He didn't be able to do anything he wants. Look at the face of the lawyer. Nothing on there. No marks. <laughs> I'm sure he respects the, uh, the gritty effort that Santa Moro has put forth. But he's not being challenged in real way. He's not being challenged physically or intellectually. Body shot, body shot. Game. Oh, yeah. the horse and let's go. Okay. That's the uh, best person there, Doug. Yeah. Stop. Asking for more. <laughs> Step back. Not wise either. Box. Well, you're asking for it. One, two from Diego. Santa Mora, tough enough, durable enough to take us into this round six and give viewers a chance to see all of the, the various wrinkles in the Taylor Hoyas game. And he's talking, that tomorrow does speak Spanish. He's letting him know Diego doesn't no. speak English, so he's using his own native language. Here you go. A nice ring finish. Knows how to control the distance. Knows how to control the pace. He's offense-minded, but he's economical. Doesn't waste punches. Seldom gets reckless. Stop! Stop! The body work has really been an emphasis for Diego Deloya in his last couple of fights. Early on in his career, got away with just being that head hunter. Yeah, I didn't see the body attack from, from Diego De La Hoya in 2013 and 2014. 
Neil trying to put it together. Good stiff jab. Right hand, final seconds of the round. Santamoro bloody from that right eye. That'll do it for six. Water. That, was, that was a better round. I know you cut up. That was a better round, right? For you. You can still win the round, but what's going on is, what's going on is, you're breaking him down. He's tired and stuck in here. You know, you're a little tired too. What you're gonna need to do is, you need to throw it over here right, right? That little one. Right, right. I know because you're, because you're not blocking. So, you gotta, so what happens is, when he throws those cherry right hands, he gets dipped out the right hand, you gotta come with your right hand, over the top, boom. And then back to the body, boom, okay? So you jab, jab, jab. He's gonna try to do it all here right. Step over and catch it with the right. Make sure your hand, your left hand is up. Okay, that that's up. Open right, right, and then go body. Siete. Round, se round seven. Seventh round of action. It's scheduled for eight between Diego De La Hoya and Rocco Santos Moro. Beto Duran along with Doug Fisher no, 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 no. on the night of the Hold Amir on, Khan stop, stop taking on Canelo Alvarez. This one's in the Super Phantom Weight Division. Diego De La Hoya undefeated 14-0 with eight KOs. Santo Moro from Las Vegas 13-0 only has that one KO. And now I think Doug can start seeing the difference in the amount of power that each of them has and all the comp competition they've also gone up against. Well, just look at Santamaro's face. In his corner is a, a veteran corner man and cut man and, and a really good trainer in his own right, Rudy Hernandez. And I almost wish that Rudy wasn't as good of a cut man as he is because there are cuts and abrasions um, over, over and under both of Santamoro's eyes, but Time. I'd like to see the fight stop because there's just no way Santamoro can win this Hopefully. fight. Oh, it's going to be a point One deducted point. from De La Hoya. One point. Hit him low. low. This is the third One time point. Jay Navy had to, had to tell him he had given two warnings. Go over there. And the hey, point is there. deducted for the third time. Correction, the only way Santamoro could win this fight Watch. is by disqualification. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he should encourage Jacob De La Hoya to, to hit him below the belt a few more times. But I think there's just a lot of punishment that Santamaro's taken. And uh, like I said before, if I was in his corner, I would save him from himself. His right hand landed by De La Hoya with ease. His courage outweighs his, his, uh, his ability. His bravado from the fighter with Uruguay roots. Now he's going to both eyes. Left eye is swelling. Rapidly. Yeah, there's bruising, there's swelling, and there's cuts uh, around both eyes. The nose is bleeding really badly, so he's probably not getting a lot of oxygen that's affecting his breathing. And he's never been down no. until this fight. No. He went down in the second, never been cut like this. As Santo Moro. Well, he's going to get a lot more punishment because Diego De La Hoya was docked the, punch, uh, do docked the point for uh, a low blow, so he's going to switch his attention to the okay. face. Yeah, it's going to be gonna head shots from here on out. The Thank the goodness. Santo Moro's corner stops it. He puts Thank his hands you. up in protest, but Shane Mosley decides that his fighter has seen enough. Thank you, Shane. Protects the young Rocco Santo Moro. He that was the right thing to do. A lot of heart from the young fighter. If you protect him, he can continue to have a exactly, career. Exactly, exactly, and, and, and be able to see clearly. Oh, look at that. That right uppercut on the fly from Diego De La Hoya. And that was the last punch of the fight. But it's like bag work. It's, it's like, yeah. And this is what the old timers call, oh, and he even let him know. He gave him a hint, here it comes. Boom. Right uppercut on the fly as he's moving out of range. And, and Santa Morrow can't even see. Even when, when he did have clear vision, he couldn't protect himself from Diego De La Hoya. I think Santa Morrow was tough enough to go the full eight rounds, but he would have taken so much needless punishment. No point to that. There was, he wasn't going to get back into this one. Good call from Sugar Shane Mosley. Protect your fighter. I'm squeamish, so I would have pulled the plug right before the sixth round. But, you know, Mosley being the warrior that he is, you know, he wants to give his guy a chance. He wants to give his guy a chance to try and rally, try to make something happen. But Santa Morrow didn't have the talent, the skill, or the power. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at the official time. One minute.
59 seconds. Round number seven, referee Jay Nady puts a halt to this bout. Your winner by TKO and still undefeated, Diego De La Hoya. Mexicali's own Diego De La Hoya improves the 15 and 0, his ninth stoppage of his career, the 21 year old. Let's say Cachanilla power. Uruchicali looked good in this win against Rocco Santamoro, stopping him in the seventh round.